Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are. I'm Paul Cook, and welcome to my studio. Just before we start, I'd like to show you just outside the studio door. Now this is quite rare for this corner of the UK here in Sussex. We must have had oh, about two inches. Now I know that's a mere dusting for some of you, but here the county will probably grind to a halt. There'll be panic buying in the shops and we'll be under martial law by the end of the day. So as a way of warming us up, today we're going to have a go at this lovely little lavender field in Provence, France. Now it's something that's been requested by several of you. So come and join me and we'll paint this together. Okay, so for today's material, my paper is some lovely Saunders Waterford Rough, 300 pound, won't need stretching. Any decent watercolor paper will do. My colors today, my normal three primaries, cobalt blue, alizarin crimson, cadmium yellow, also some cadmium orange, yellow ochre, dioxidine purple, cerulean blue, Prussian blue, and burnt umber. My brushes, three quarter inch flat, number three rigger, number 12 round, and a mop. Okay, the drawing, as always, free of charge to download from my website. If you're having a go yourself, just be aware of this vanishing point. As all the rows of lavender are parallel, they will meet at a vanishing point, somewhere about there. Now, if you haven't seen my tutorial on perspective, link above. It's worth a watch. The first colour to mix is the sky, and this is a 50-50 cobalt blue and cerulean blue. Let's go. So wet the sky with a mop and some clean, well, cleanish water. Then straight in with the blue mix, and I'm keeping it fairly light on the right side where the direction of light is coming from. Now dab in a tiny amount of cadmium yellow into your blue. And this is a great colour for distant hills. So I'm now going to be painting in the lavender field, so I'm pre-mixing a few colours. This is some Prussian blue with a small amount of alizarin crimson. Next is some yellow ochre, just with a touch of burnt umber. And here is a 50-50 mix of cadmium yellow and cobalt blue for a nice green. And you can see above, I've also got some dioxidine purple ready. Right now I'm wetting with clean water, just the lavender field. And now with my number 12, painting in the gaps with the yellow ochre mix. Now I pre-mix these colours first because I want to work quite fast, all wet in wet. Now for that lovely purple, making sure the colour is stronger in the foreground. Next, for the Prussian blue mix for the shadow side. And again, stronger colour in the foreground. Mm -hmm. 
Next, with the green mix, I'm splatting into the foreground. Now, this is not only a good way to create the randomness of the green foliage, but it's the best way of getting colour into your washes without disturbing the paint with your brush. Yellow ochre mix again for these distant fields and some suggestions of a sort of track at the side here. Now this is a much more of a blue base mix of the green and I'm laying my brush flat to the paper for these trees and then dropping in a darker value along the bottom. So now this is a very yellowy green mix. And then I'm dropping in wet in wet a much darker value to the shadow side. The wooden end of my brush here to drag out and score into the paper a few details. Now for that little hut, it's the yellow ochre mix again and now with some burnt umber for some ground texture. A little hedgy type thing along here. Okay, so now for the roof, and this is just some cadmium orange. And then I'm dropping in some burnt umber, wet in wet. Some burnt umber again, and as the sun is coming from the right, we need some good strong shadows. A little touch of purple again for this distant lavender and it's just some simple bands of colour. Now for some detail in the lavender. Just with the purple I'm splatting in this random texture. Now the great thing about this method is when the brush is fully loaded you get nice big blobs so it's perfect for the foreground. But as you run out of paint the splats get smaller so just right for the distance and definitely worth masking out the area above. Now, while we're waiting for that to dry, we can put some detail on the hut. With my number 12 brush, this is just some burnt umber with a touch of Prussian blue to darken it.
Now with my rigger for some finer detail. And the same colour again here for some stony texture. Next with my spray I'm giving the field a good old squirt but not saturating it. And then with that same Prussian blue mix putting in the shadow side of each row. And again remembering to lighten it as we proceed to the distance. And if it begins to dry out, you can always give it another spray. So next I want a nice shadow coming off the hut and tree and I'm using burnt umber here only in the areas where the ground is. And then a darker purple on top of a lavender. And this always looks more natural than running a grey wash straight over the top of all of it. So now it's time for a little detail on the lavender. I'm using my rigger again here and that same Prussian blue mix and dabbing in lots of little short strokes. Now if you haven't seen my video on grasses, link above, it's worth a look. Now you only want to do this in the foreground, certainly no more than about halfway, as your eye will just naturally fill in the rest. Here I'm just adding in a little watery purple to give a little more definition. And here with a little watery burnt umber, some shadows along the ground.
and of course my favourite technique, softening a few hard edges with a slightly damp piece of kitchen paper. magic scalpel time and I'm just scratching in a few highlights and again no further than about halfway. Final touch now with my classic pastel pencil for a few sort of stemmy bits here. Now, yeah, I just think I'm beginning to overwork it. So let's sign it and we're done. Another next morning review. And I just think these distant hills are a little bit crisp. So kitchen paper again, then soften the top edges to create that little bit of distance. And now we're finished. Well, I've warmed up quite a bit now. I've got my hot chocolate here. So I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did and you'll give it a go. Please don't forget to leave a comment and suggest something you'd like to paint. And I look forward to seeing you all again next week. So keep warm, stay safe, bye for now.